You know, the, the biggest misconception um, with a lot of early stage growth stage companies is this. Um, their pitch is, you know, they may have a great idea, yeah. um, but the execution of the plan is where there's usually a lot of holes that, you know, most investors have, an, uh, have a big issue with. What's shaking? Welcome back to All In. I'm your host, Rick Jordan. And today, if you listen to any of the show, you know that I own a cybersecurity company and I'm in the process of going public, specifically doing 50 to 70 acquisitions over the next two years. Well, today we've brought in an expert on M&A. But before we dive into this, Share this out with three people today, especially if you're a startup or thinking about starting something that's amazing. You got this incredible idea. We're going to talk about such amazing things with M&A today, how to raise capital, how to just even have the right things together to even make your pitch. It's going to be amazing. So share this with three people today that you know, your partners, your friends, your, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, whatever. That's the only way we grow. We don't take sponsorships. We don't promote this on Google Ads, anything. The only way we help more people is when you share. Now, in the last decade, my guest has been directly involved, get this, more than 50 financing and M&A assignments totaling over $1 billion, 16 years in experience in the industry, and is CEO and president of SA Capital Partners. Maz Power, how are you doing? Is it Power or Power? It's poor. It is. Wow. Okay. But power's nice. Do you ever build? Yeah, I, I don't mind power. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> not much. Not much. Good to be on your show. Thank you for uh, bringing me on. I uh, really appreciate it. I've seen a number of your uh, episodes in the past. I really like the content. It's fresh. Um, feel it's like there's a really nice educational component to it, you know, and throughout your uh, podcast so big well, thank you brother i appreciate that a lot i bring on a lot you know if you've been a fan for a while that we bring on a lot of different people from a lot of different mm -hmm. industries and yeah. uh, i feel like that's a good sampling because no matter if you're in any industry because i'm sure you you're into really funding and helping startups right correct yeah, yeah. they're probably in multiple different industries but there, there, there's commonalities that take place in a lot of those and unless you you have a, a niche in some area but still learning from other people outside your space was one of the best things that I could have ever done. You know, and that's why I love doing mm -hmm. this, but that's also why you're on here too, man, because it, we're going to talk about the best thing in the world for business today, right? Money. <laughs> that's what we're doing. Yeah. You're um, hundred percent correct. Yeah. You're hundred percent right. I mean, um, you know, the fundamentals of business don't change regardless of what industry you're in. Um, it's the same block and tackle. Um, you know, it doesn't matter what uh, industry you're in, you know, what your niche is. Um, it's uh, essentially, it's just the same block and tackle that, you know, this basic fundamentals that everybody should know. Yeah, for sure. So your funding strategy, you're into mostly startups these days, right? Correct. Yeah. Cool. And you, and you had an investment banking firm at some point when we were talking before the show. Was that what you were looking at? Like lower middle market businesses was with the investment banking firm? Yeah, with the investment banking firm, it was definitely lower middle market. It was a boutique shop out of Chicago. Um, so it was uh, a little bit more established businesses, you know, companies generating revenues, um, you know, EBITDA of uh, 1 billion and uh, 1, mil uh, 1 million EBITDA and higher companies that we primarily targeted with the investment banking group. Uh, with SA Capital Partners, um, it, the focus has been more on early stage, growth stage companies. Um, in my opinion, it's the largest sector out there, uh, but it's also the most underserviced. Um, primarily being, you know, you're a little bit too early for going down the investment banking route. Um, it's primarily, you know, a lot of these companies are bootstrapped. They can't incur those types of costs. Um, a lot of the services that are offered um, aren't really needed for a lot of early stage growth stage companies. Um, but there's obviously, a, you know, a big value add in terms of you know, having somebody on your team to kind of walk you through the whole process. Um, so essentially, we started this firm um, with the goal of kind of identifying a, a void in the market because um, it's a space that a lot of companies just don't really delve into. Um, so we primarily focus in terms of working with early stage growth stage companies, trying to give them all the uh, strategy, all the tools that are next necessary to you know make them the most attractive to attract. Uh, potential investors. 
Yeah, let's talk about this gap that you're explaining in the marketplace too. Um, uh, you know, is that what you identified when you were in investment banking that drove you this direction? You know, it, it, it's you know, I want to say this that um, ten years ago, uh, fifteen years ago, uh, most investors, investment groups, s- startups, early stage companies, they were not going towards investing into you know a startup or an early stage company um, with. A lot of you know a lot of things within the landscape has changed over the years. Um, there's been so many success stories of investors coming on board, um, you know, pre-IPO, early stage, growth stage, um, where obviously from a valuation standpoint, you get a more bang for your buck. You know, where there's high risk, high reward. So um, you know, from that perspective, with a lot of these success stories, a lot of people are more open to investing into early stage, growth stage businesses. That's interesting because it's a. I feel you, and I see a lot of pitches in this area too. And you know, I was just on stage with a shark last week and some other investors and taking some pitches mm-hmm. for some things, and it was interesting to see some of the questions that were being asked. You know, because uh, you know, I I guess I'm considered an investor because I'm active in M and A. You know, so it's sure. it. Sure. You know, I didn't even label myself as that to begin with, but then my branding agency is like, yeah, you are because you're acquiring companies, which means you're <laughs> essentially an investor. I'm like, okay, yeah. I guess that's truth. You know, if that's, if that's black and white then that's black and white, but hearing some of these early stage, you know, or growth phase companies, you know, at least the, the couple of pitches that I've heard in the last six months or so, they don't seem to really have all their information together to even mm-hmm. make the pitch to begin with. Is this what you experienced too? Yeah. I mean, it, you know, the, the biggest misconception um, with a lot of early stage growth stage companies is this, um, their pitch is, you know, they may have a great idea, yeah. um, but the execution of the plan is where there's usually a lot of holes that, you know, most investors have an, uh, have a big issue with. Yeah, if you're going to yeah. come in and say, okay, I'm going to enter X market and it's a $2 billion market. And my goal is to acquire 25% of the market share. Good luck with making that as your, you know, closing argument to attract an investor. <laughs> without any it's sales probably, yet, right? <laughs> yeah. Without any sales. Um, and, you know, so th- the plan is where I think, uh, you know, and I'm sure you probably see this as well, um, you know, through the multiple acquisitions that you've gone down is, Really, where you want to understand is what's your plan? Okay, I yeah. like the idea. I like the uh, the concept. Um, you know, maybe it's protected. You have the right IP behind you, patents, and so on and so yeah. forth. But what is your plan to take this out into the marketplace? How are you going to attract people to, you know, utilize your product or your service? Um, and I think that's where a lot of you know early on, a lot of entrepreneurs fail to kind of really present that right type of plan. Yeah, it's it's hilarious because another conversation I've had too is with some other investors. It's like you'd be amazed at how many CEOs are broke and have mm-hmm. rocks in their pocket, you know. But then they'll come up in the pitch and be like, "I'm the idea guy" or "I'm the idea girl." You know? <laughs> <laughs> how do you? Because I'm sure there's some, you know. How do you first? How do you differentiate between something that you want to get involved in, and also if it's something you don't, how do you let them down easy too? Well, you know, first and foremost, um, you know, from our, you know, where we get involved with a lot of these companies, we're not too concerned with you know your marketing strategy, your sales strategy. We could help you with that. Um, so first and foremost, we gotta like, we gotta be in love with the product. The service, um, there's got to be a need for it. Um, if you're coming out there and saying, "Oh, I'm looking to replace Facebook," um, good luck. But you know, uh, what do you have that's you know, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we'll look at you know. Obviously, you know, we have to look at what the product is, what the service is. Is there a need for it? Do we feel that um, you know, it's something that can definitely come into the marketplace and come with a splash. So those are the types of opportunities that we're really targeting. Um, from a strategy standpoint, we're not really looking at it that because we know that once we get involved, there's an advisory aspect to it. Um, so we could help, you know, work with, you know, any potential clients in terms of really fine tuning that plan and just making sure their I's are dotted, T's are crossed um, prior to getting in front of an investor. 
Um, so that's, you know, and obviously, you know, even if the product is great, um, you know, the IP is very important. So, you know, is this product, yeah. a protected, you know, the patents, you know, is this trademark, you know, so on and so forth. For sure. It's interesting to me too, because there's a, there's a couple of acquisitions that I've looked at to where there's been some very legitimate IP. And it, mm-hmm. it's interesting because they haven't been able to market it. They, they had, they were the idea people, right? And mm-hmm. they weren't able to really bring that, you know, like a, a SaaS app or something, weren't really able to bring that to market because they didn't have that skill set in house, mm-hmm. you know, they didn't seek out the help externally either. So okay. it just kind of sat there stagnant for five years. And then I see them like, holy crap, this, this is amazing. You know, yeah. <laughs> the, the stuff that's there. And it's like, I have the team to market it. I have the team to, to bring it, bring mm-hmm. it to the market. And, but the IP, they never even thought to patent protect it. You know, over the right. course of the years, it's kind of crazy. You know, it was cool because it was like the one specifically was developed internally to solve a problem within their own company. And then they mm-hmm. saw that there could be a need for other light companies too, which was cool. So they brought in a couple customers, but then that's as far as it went, you know, and, and doing something like 50 grand a year in revenue, that's it from this thing. And I'm sitting along, this is, this thing's amazing, you know, and, and right. it's like first, you know, with the acquisition one, <laughs> <laughs> I'm patent protecting this thing, you know, clear out of the yeah. gates just so it's safe. But then something like that, do you have those that are just, you know, I, I'm not trying to be mean, but just that clueless that come to you and you're like, do you know what you're sitting on here? Yeah. Uh, you know, there are a lot of, you know, um, clients that, you know, they really don't understand what they're really, what they have. And, you know, yeah. we try to walk them through it, you know, in terms of, you know, and a lot of those, you know, um, I would want to say those clients that are really more geared towards more of that inventor or developer, where they're more, you know, maybe the brains behind oh, for the sure. operation. Oh, That's but, yeah, that was totally know, the case in this scenario yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, but they may be lacking, you know, that business acumen to really, you know, propel this. Um, that's where we really look for a synergistic fit in terms yeah. of possibly bringing you know, a potential investor that could, you know, kind of fill in those voids that they're lacking. Um, but, you know, to answer your question in terms of, you know, certain clients that may <laughs> approach us where we're just like, okay, it's, it's just going to be a tall order. Um, you know, we, we obviously, from our perspective, it's, you know, we're advisors anyway that yeah, you look yeah. at. It. So um, the only thing that we can do is do right by our clients. And, you know, obviously we can give our input, um, you know, and, you know, a lot of times it's just really trying to make them understand that this is why this is going to be a challenging opportunity and why, you know, it's probably not a good fit for us at this stage in the game. But if you can get these questions answered or make these adjustments, then yeah, it's something that we definitely could take a look at down the road. That's really um, cool. Do you help them yeah. with identifying those things like in the initial conversation too? Like, here's what I see that you need to work on and what we can reconvene in six months or something. Yeah, I mean, you know, first and foremost, um, you know, obviously anybody that approaches us, um, we obviously want to take a look at what their business plan is. They have a deck prepared, great. Yeah. Um, if they don't have those things, um, then right off the bat, I'll tell them, hey, listen, put some thought into it. You got, you really have to put a business plan together. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's the only way we can really rip through something and really have a really firm understanding in terms of, you know, what they're planning and, you know, what their goals and objectives are with you know, whatever product or service they have. I appreciate your approach to that too. Cause that's similar with me in my industry. Cause mine's a role at play. You know, and it's, mm-hmm. uh, when I look at, at a potential acquisition, you know, cause it, there, there's a lot that come across and it's just, you know, this one might not be right, you know, or the EBITDA might be too low for this one. You know, like I've even compared from stage in one of my talks an acquisition, cause I'm targeting between 500 K to 5 million in top line revenue for what I'm mm-hmm. doing. And for, as an acquisition target, like the very first qualifier to, to make sense for me. And there's some, like there was one doing 500K, there was another that was doing 2 million and their SDE, their seller discretionary earnings was identical, you know, at like $100,000 a year. And they were in the same industry too. So you saw, you know, with the, whatever the multiples were, but essentially one business that was doing 500K that was more of like a startup compared to one that was doing 2 million were worth the same exact thing. 
their, their valuation yeah. was identical, you know, and it yeah. was, <laughs> but then I saw it, it's like, well, I'm going to inherit another one and a half million dollars of just crap, you know, <laughs> if, yeah. I, if I go for that one. So, I mean, in, in a situation, comparing it and contrasting those two, it's like, I went mm -hmm. for that one thing, they were on my desk at the same time, I went for the 500K just because of the potential and it was a little bit more clean versus trying yes. to just undo a lot of other things. But both of them were in the same boat. Like they were both looking for investment. They were both looking for, for mm -hmm. money to be acquired. And the one that was also smaller had its finances in order versus the other one. I mean, we had to dig around for some things, man. You right. know, so it's like, well, do you have like a, some things that you can tell, you know, people like it's like, bring this with you to our first meeting, please. <laughs> you know, be, before we even talk, do you have things that, that you tell them, I need to see these right out of the gate? Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, your projections are very important. Um, you know, five-year projections are, I would say very necessary. Um, you got, you have to know your numbers. So, you know, if somebody is asking you specific, you know, numbers in terms of how much capital has been invested, um, what's your burn rate? Um, these are basic things that if you're sitting there and you have no idea, um, then, you know, for any potential investor, that's a huge red flag. Um, cause you know, I'm sure, you, you know, if you're looking to invest into a company and you ask somebody, you know, what's your burn rate? You know, how much are you burning through on a monthly basis? And they're like, I have no idea. You're not going to be comfortable, you know, writing them a check for a million dollars or $5 million or whatever the case may be, because you're going to be like, okay, you don't know how much you're spending right now. I feel very uncomfortable giving you my money because tomorrow I want you to know how my money's going to be <laughs> yeah. spent. Six weeks, it's going to be gone. <laughs> the yeah, potential's exactly. there. Yeah. So, you know, knowing their numbers inside out, um, you know, really is very important, you know, and that's a huge red flag. Um, and if you present anything to an investor, you should know where you're coming from because they're going to want to know how you got to a certain number. So if you come up with some pie in the sky number of, okay, in three years, we're going to be doing a billion dollars, you better have a very strong plan to back up how you're going to get to a billion dollars in revenues. You know, or whatever the case may be. So, um, those are things that we kind of really take a lot of time and, uh, you know, try to understand. And it can't be one of those generic, well, you know, well, we're going to capture 20% market share. Yeah. Okay. Guess what? That takes a lot of capital to acquire 20% market share of any industry that you're in. Um, well, you know, where is this, you know, where are these marketing dollars going to be spent? You know, what separates you from, you know, potential competitors out there? You know, all of those things. Um, are very important for sure what is it about what you do that really excites you man you know because I, I mean you're very intelligible obviously with this but what do you see that's like man i'm glad i got up today you know it, you know i'll be completely candid with you it's really it's seeing um the growth that some of these some of our clients have you know when we have that first conversation and you know six months a year into um you know, seeing how they handle potential investor management calls, you know, being on calls and seeing the growth within them. Um, there's a, you know, there's an aspect of that where um, it's pretty cool. <laughs> you know, there's yeah. no other way to describe it. Um, you know, so, you know, you get involved pretty early on. So, you know, obviously any, you know, potential investor or, you know, or um, I'm sorry, any potential client that comes to you, they're bringing their baby. And when you see their baby grow, there, it's a cool feeling. Um, but yeah, I would say that excitement, um, you know, makes it all worthwhile. Um, and it's, it's pretty cool to get involved with, um, you know, a lot of companies that early on in the process. That's really awesome, man. Because, yeah, because yeah. their success becomes your success too. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's awesome. Because I mean, it's <laughs> yeah, you're making money, but for starters, you're not going to invest in something that, or that has a high potential of failure there's obviously yeah, exactly. risk that's inherent in any investment for sure yeah. but it, the people are the exciting part man <laughs> when, you, when, yeah. you see, when you see them start to skyrocket and see their lives fulfilled and at the same time I'm like yeah i'm making money but this is really awesome to be a part of this journey too yeah and you, you develop throughout the process obviously you're spending a lot of time um you know with a lot of these clients you yeah. obviously develop certain relationships i mean I've had clients that, you know, um, we became great friends, you know, after, you know, working with them, you know, on multiple deals. So, 
uh, it's pretty cool. That's awesome, man. So coming out of the pandemic here, you know, and really, I don't, I don't, I used to say that months ago, but then you see these waves that come, you know, and go and the, the market has been so volatile over the, mm-hmm. over the last year and a half, yeah. you know, what advice do you have? Cause in the phase right now and probably for the next year or so, what advice do you have to startups that are raising capital in this, this, this tumultuous of a marketplace we're in right now? Yeah. You know, the biggest thing that, you know, uh, you know, and I try to tell this to every client is know what you're getting into. Um, we're in an extremely competitive landscape. There are deals getting done now. So, you know, with 2020, uh, things came to a standstill, um, yeah. you know, especially the M&A world, you know, aside from the deals that were already in the works, new deals that, you know, developed during that time and got funded were far and few. Um, so you had a flow over deals from last year, and then obviously you, you have deals that are coming out right now. So it's a competitive landscape, but that's where it's that much more important that um, you should have everything, you know, buttoned up on your end. Um, so when you have you have that opportunity to get in front of an investor, um, it's that much more important for you to be on your A game um, and not sit back and not know where you're going and you know. Um, not understanding, you know, or not explaining your your business or your plan the right way to a potential investor. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens over the course of the next year. I remember seeing yeah. that because I mean, even with uh, even with my public offering, it was we didn't really make much movement on it last year just because things mm-hmm. were so crazy with stuff. You know, yep. and it's but now I mean, coming out of it, at least in my industry in cybersecurity and IT services, it's like mm-hmm. it, it is to me. It seems like a buyer's market. You know, yeah. and when I'm because it's it's like everything's on sale, man. <laughs> mm-hmm. Very true. Yeah, no, very very true. And uh, things have definitely you know picked up, but you know, obviously going through something like this, something that nobody's ever experienced. Yeah. In our times, um, you know, these are the times where you really, you know, you got to really look at things and put things in perspective, and you know, even you know certain holes within your business. Um, because even let's just say you were generating revenues and you came to a standstill, how are you going to you know, handle this? So, you know, let's just say hypothetically something happens down the line. Hopefully, God forbid, it doesn't happen. But if it does, how are you going to handle that? Sure. You know, if there's a lockdown or you know whatever the case may be. Yeah, I dig it, my man. So, what's next for you over the next six months? You got any things that you're really excited about? Um, you know, right now it's just, uh, we're, uh, working with a number of promising clients. Uh, we're always looking for new clients, um, you know, interest, interesting things. Um, and, um, you know, continually we're trying to get our brand out there, get the message out there, yeah. what we're trying to accomplish and, you know, just build up that word of mouth following that, you know, every, any other uh, business is trying to do right now. Sure. Are there any segments or, or industries that are more attractive to you than, uh, than others? You know, it, it, with early stage growth stage companies, you know, we're industry agnostic, so we'll we'll take a look at everything. You know, so there's not really a, a focus or a niche. Because um, keep in mind that a lot of the investors that we, you know, kind of work with, um, when you're investing into startups and early stage companies, uh, your investment criteria is forever changing. <laughs> you know, yeah, some yeah. some has got like every few months they're looking at different types of industries. So. Um, now, when you get a little bit more upstream, then yeah, you're going to obviously get, you know, more industry specific, you know, s- investors. Um, but those aren't the investors that are, you know, we're really approaching. You're not going to go up and get in front of some of these larger private equity or VC groups, um, you know, um, majority of the time. Yeah, no doubt, my man. Dude, you've been amazing. Thank you. Because it's, uh, where can everyone find you? Um, so we're, uh, we can reach the SA Capital Partners, LLC.com. Um, there's obviously a client inquiry tab. If you fill out your information, reach out to the team. They'll reach out to you uh, pretty quickly, um, start gathering some information. And if it makes sense, um, they'll schedule uh, an initial uh, consultation. That's awesome, man. Thanks for providing some amazing info to people that need it today. Because there's a lot of individuals coming out of last year that are, I've been calling them like COVIDpreneurs, right? <laughs> you know, <laughs> laid off, don't have a job, you know, whatever it is. But that's some of the, now they've got time to try to figure out where they want to go in life. And it's a, it's like a kick in the pants just to make a good shift, you know? Yeah. Uh, no, you're 100% correct with that. I mean, the amount of 
various different uh, masks and um, you know that I've seen in terms of different startups where they came up with different creative ideas. Um, there's been a lot out there, let's just say that. For sure, brother. You're amazing, yeah. man. Thank you so much for bringing the energy today. And that's a great yeah, time to say, hey, that. we're done. <laughs> All right, brother. Thanks, my man. All right. Sounds good. Take care. Thank you again for uh, having me on the show. You bet.